running for California governor, and um, I have been a working class professional for over 20 years. I've worked so many jobs, uh, I can't even tell you, all the way up until I've been a uh, customer service department supervisor for pharmaceutical companies. So I'm, I'm a representative of the working class American and the working class citizen, and I believe this is a attribute to my character that will uh, the average American in the state of California will be able to relate with. Um, I've also been involved in, the, in activism in our community as a community activist. I've protested and gotten along with demonstrators to protest against Monsanto, the genetically modified food company and Roundup um, poison creator. <laughs> um, I've protested against police brutality. I've pro protested for women's rights. Um, I've protested against chemtrails, if you know what that is. But I've done my best to just get involved with the community and relate to all of the various issues that concern them. And this definitely, again, gives adds to my strength and character as a candidate. Um, uh, so as an activist, I've been known as Governor Wildstar, and I'm also known by a group of my supporters as Q-Ball, the rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually moved out here from Milwaukee, Wisconsin to pursue a career in music, and I've been mm -hmm. out here since 1999, and I actually have a, uh, I guess, a moderately successful career as an underground musician. My music has, is hosted on Pandora, Apple iTunes, Spotify, all that good stuff. I also have a song in the movie Scary Movie 4, so I've had enough success as an underground musician to where I've gained a bit of notoriety, and that also helps add to, again, my attraction, when it, especially when it comes to the younger voter. Um, they'll definitely be able to relate to me and what I have to say <laughs> about, our about our government, or at least listen to me and lend me an ear. Um, so uh, I've also been involved in a lot of altercations with the police. I don't know if you guys know this or, <laughs> but, or would assume that, but believe it or not, I have. So much so, and more so since I've been a libertarian. So Jeff is actually right. When you become a libertarian, for some reason, you just become a danger. <laughs> and I've uh, been a libertarian, uh, quote unquote, since about 2010. Uh, I did run for governor of California in uh, 2014 as an independent candidate, and up until that time, considered myself to be liberty minded. I didn't identify with the Libertarian Party per se because I really didn't want to identify with any identity politics at all, whether it be Libertarian, Republican, Democrat, whatever the case may be. I wanted to stay that free-minded, open-minded individual that I am to where when I get in the voting booth, I'm not forced to feel like I need to support a certain candidate. And I feel like this is a, definitely a message that needs to be pronounced to be confident in voting Libertarian. It is empowering your vote, not throwing it away. So once I started to learn about politics and um, protests and actually want to get paid as a uh, freedom fighter, I noticed that politics was really the way out and the way to do things, especially when it came to the chain of command in the state of California. Hired by Dr. Ron Paul during the Ron Paul Revolution in 2010. <laughs> Thank you. And I just found Dr. Paul to be very inspiring. I didn't even know what the Federal Reserve was <laughs> before I heard about Ron Paul and fiat currency and its effect to what it does to our monetary value which affects all of us, every socioeconomic class from the bottom up. So the way that we need to strengthen our state is by strengthening our money, most importantly. So these are a few things that inspired me to run for office. And I don't want to bore you all with all of that good stuff because all of you guys are libertarians, which makes that great. So I can just skip to the point, which is this. I want to talk to you guys about how we can win in 2018 because a lot of what I face when I talk to people about my candidacy is opposition just in the fact that oh I'm a libertarian and I don't have a shot in hell factor in that I'm black also you get the picture 
So <laughs> it's a matter of us getting out of the mindset that we cannot win. We definitely can. And this is exactly how. The first thing we need, we need to do is start making liberty synonymous with freedom. Really quickly, can anybody here family one way that they feel their freedom is restricted by government. You sir. Oh, I mean, how I save my money, what I who I can sleep with. I mean, you can just go on and on. All right. So just on those two things, with regards to who you can sleep with, that shouldn't be the government's business at all. That's your liberty <laughs> and your money. Of course, the government should not be taking your money without your permission. They're stealing from you. That's taxation equals theft. And my, uh, my liberty has been eroded by government was just today I received all my DMV stuff for the new car. <laughs> Big piece of metal, total waste. Exactly. Paper, total waste. Right. The money I had to pay for all that junk, total waste. Absolutely. And it does not enhance in any way, shape, or form, just a cash cow for the government. Total waste. Precisely. And I could have done something. I could have given that money to you. I would love that. <laughs> and that's exactly another way that the government restricts our freedom. So to give us back our freedom, the government needs to respect our right to travel. That's our natural inherent right by God, our creator, etc., to move from point A to point B. What business is the government? Uh, what business is it of the government that we should have to register our property with the state? We're turning over the um, the right of our property, the ownership of our property, over to the state with those license plates, with that driver's license, which you should not have to be issued, and if you want it to be issued, should be by choice. It shouldn't be mandatory. We can end the private public relationships that our government has with certain um, entities such as the Department of Motor Vehicles to in that relationship to where companies like the Department of Motor Vehicles there'll be more of them so now instead of you having to pay absorbent amount of money just to register your car you can go to another company and pay less and that equals the free market solution for more competition Jeff you got one yeah I you know, the government keeps me from putting certain substances in my body, um, or if I do, I really go to jail, and if I'm going to just hang out in my house and not hurt anybody, what business is it? <laughs> You're absolutely right about that. And that's another way the government restricts our freedoms. We should be free to choose whatever do we want to do with our bodies, as long as we're not harming anyone else. And especially when it comes to criminalization of whatever that uh, consumption may be. These are victimless crimes. Who is really being hurt here other than the person themselves and them making their own personal judgment? It's people that drink themselves to a stupor and now they have alcohol poisoning. Whose fault was that? That dummy. So now you gotta go up all now to deal with the consequences, which can also lead to your death. But you know, there's another side to that coin. Talking about mental health, mm -hmm. the government make you take medications, spend medication poisons that you don't want to take. Of course. And we should definitely not be doing shows. it all. Yes. Mental health is up. Yeah. Or another something. Yeah. <laughs> what you got for me, my man? The, the biggest, you're touching on the most um, over offensive thing of all people. But one thing that the government has actual control over the rules of all people in regards to the amount of people in the government is over Oh, yeah. And it is all those insidious yet invisible um, regulations that cost our the cost of our living in this world to to absorb it. Oh yes, of and course. For no actual benefit to us. Right. So I was curious as to how you would address the, the scope of regulation in this area. Well, when it comes to regulations, how many different government bureaus have been created to regulate us. I mean, we have one for even just the amount of power that we consume when it comes to consumption tax. These are the excise taxes that the government throws on just for you for doing business. Why should we have to pay the government the tax for our internet provider? They shouldn't be involved with that at all. 
So there's a lot of government regulatory practices that would definitely be, would come to an end, and if need be, by executive order. The governor does to have that authority as well. There will be a, a defined, fine line in sand when I take office. I'm a libertarian, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat. So I'll need people like him lobbying for me against the legislation. I'll need people like um, Derek lobbying for me in Washington to bring about these policy changes. And if we can't make it happen through legislation, through a proper channel, if need be, I will execute an executive order. What you got? Mine is regulation too. I don't have business. I like to say I commit three felonies a day. <laughs> <laughs> just just by going to work. And yeah. and you know you have uh, Regulators and, and taxing agencies that can walk into a business, don't even have to flash a badge and say that they're there to inspect you. And, you know, a lot of people are in a misconception that you could say, well, sh get on. Except for it doesn't quite work that way in business. What they do is they go back to code enforcement mm -hmm. and they get a warrant from them. They don't go through a judge. You're right. And, and, so now you've got even a huge, huger problem if they come back and you've told them, you know, bring a warrant. That's right. And, Absolutely. And, and, and the governor is passing on and delegating those responsibilities to those code enforcers. My, my goal will be to make sure that every sworn officer of the state, whether it be a police officer, whether it be a lawyer, <clears throat> excuse me, whether it be a politician, uphold their oath to uphold the United States Constitution. That's it. Thank you. And that's really what it's all about. So when it comes to speaking to our friends and family about liberty, our ideals of liberty, we just need to make them, again, synonymous with freedom. And when we speak with our friends and family, et cetera, about these issues, these are just different ways that we can deliver to them that little bit, that seed of liberty that needs to grow within the all. Also, how we're going to win in 2018 is being able to get over the odds. The one thing I've noticed in the last few elections is that the voter turnout in the state of California continues to decline, okay? In, in this next expected race, there's about 3 million people total that, um, that people are, uh, pardon me, that are expected to show up at the voter polls. So let's break it down like this. Three million voters show up at the primary. The Republicans split one million. Let's say you get 600,000 for John Cox, 400,000 for Travis Allen. There's a million off the table. The last two million is up to the Democrats, okay? Now, with that two million that they're expecting to show up at the polls, which most likely may not, that'll be split between Gavin Newsom and Villa Ragosa. Now, I assure you, they won't be able to pull a million votes each with Delane Easton also running, who used to be a superintendent, and John Chiang, who's a very powerful um, candidate because he's a secretary of um, uh, treasury, and he also has a lot of big name sponsors and big money sponsors and donors. So if that two million gets cut up between them, it's not going to be a million. They're going to fall short. And this is what I've learned, is in those primary elections, all we have to do is ca capture a certain amount of votes to be able to proceed through the general. Three million people out of the 40 million plus in California, 40 million plus, the Libertarian Party has 250, a quarter of a million members plus. If we can get every Libertarian off their ass in the voting booths in June, every independent voter, in the voting booths in June, every disgruntled Republican and Democratic voter in the voting booths in June, every undecided voter in a recent poll up to 30% out of the thousand that they polled was undecided, okay? The majority went to Gavin Newsom, but the other 30% was undecided. It wasn't, my name of course wasn't on there. And <laughs> had it been, I definitely believe that we would have been able to pull from those Democratic candidates as well. So if we can get all those people to the voting booths in June, that'll be all that we need. 
So my goal is to pretty much let people know, I don't need a million dollars to win. I just need a million votes. If we can lock in and secure a million pledged voters, people to show up at the voting booths and vote libertarian, that's all that we need in order to proceed through the primary. Okay? One million out of our 40 million plus in California, uh, uh, of Californians. This is going to be a team effort, and this is why we need to unify in getting our candidates onto ballot, getting our candidates into debates and into city hall meetings where we're estranged, <laughs> and of course, making sure that we're just known. Let the average voter, any voter, Republican or Democrat, those people not involved with the party, know to, to vote Libertarian. Um, and I also feel like another way for us to win in 2018 is I feel as if I'm one of the most attractive candidates running for governor. <laughs> Not only because I'm suave and cool and all of that stuff, mainly because, mainly because of my winning platform and my winning personality, okay? I went out today to the... Um, to the summit at USC with the uh, six candidates, top six candidates that are running for governor for the Republican Party and for the Democratic Party. We weren't invited, of course, because we didn't meet the $100,000 donation threshold in order to be invited into the summit. So this shows us that money takes over politics. But I'm sitting there with my wife, and we're watching everybody on the screen, and we're hearing everybody's reaction in the crowd, and nobody liked any of anybody up there. <laughs> no one was sold on one candidate that they were specifically, you know, sold on, voting for in 2018. And I'm talking to her, and every question that they asked, I'm just shaking my head because I would have blown those guys out of the water with what they were talking about. You know, they're talking about um, education system and how it's swelling, but no one wants to talk about government corruption and how, you know, Janet Napolitano squandered away $200 million and she's the UC president. Nobody brought this to a fact, but yet they want to talk about helping our children, building up our educational system, and increasing the value of our schools. That's not going to happen if we just talk about taking more taxpayers' money, which is what the Republicans and both the Democrats did, of course. But what's our solution? That free market solution is really going to increase the level of sustainability of us actually having a quality education system for our children and for our future. So with my platform, I'm offering to reform taxes, reform government, and restoring our right to choose. And these are three things that I'm pretty sure that the majority of Californians will definitely be able to support, especially when they go to my website, wildstar2018.com, and check out my podcast, <laughs> wildstar2018.com. And um, I also feel as if I have a winning personality. I mean, compared to those people up there, they're, they're just the same old suits. They're career politicians. They're not doing anything to relate to the people that they're supposed to represent. They're more so just trying to sell them on keeping their jobs, mm -hmm. keeping their pensions, and keeping their government-funded taxpayer <laughs> um, uh, power over us. We shouldn't be a majority being um, governed by a small majority. It needs to be the other way around. We are the consent that are, uh, we are the governed that have given consent to these small few to take care of these social problems that we know and feel exist in our environment. So we just need to correct that in every way that we can. And I really feel like the most important thing that we need to do when we talk about liberty to anyone is just make it as emotionally impactful as possible. This is our future on the line, literally, figuratively, in every way, shape, and form. And we can see what's happening with the Republicans and the Democrats were they to gain control of this state, it would be an, uh, a certain amount of time that the state is going to go bankrupt and our, our future as a whole will be doomed. So if we want to prevent that, if we want to get away from racial prejudice, if we want to get away from those 
um, divides when it comes to uh, cleaning up our environment or creating more options when it comes to health care, affordable health care, then we definitely need to let people know how liberty is the solution. Freedom is the solution. And at this time, right now, I'm looking for supporters. I'm looking for anyone that are willing to get involved as a uh, campaign staffer. I'm in need of people to help with petitioning right now so I can get on the ballot. I am circulating my in loop petition, so if you want to sign that, please do. If you haven't already, but um, that's to avoid the $4,000 filing fee that they're attempting to charge me to get onto the ballot. <laughs> so I would like to have an opportunity to collect enough signatures to do exactly that. And I will need all of your help. Um, I'm also looking for donors. So if you want to donate some money, please, definitely, don't hesitate. Um, right now, I'm looking for at least 1,000 people to pledge to donate $18 a month until 2018. Uh, and a thousand people donating eighteen dollars a month. That's a income of eighteen thousand dollars and a total of one hundred and eighty thousand after the six months. That's more than enough for me to get the job done. For what they're going to be spending millions of dollars on, we can spend a fraction of the cost and gain equally as much, if not more, footing when it comes to reaching the masses because of our message. So. These are ways that I'm hoping everyone here will want to get involved with my campaign. Definitely visit my website. That again is wildstar2018.com. Please take the Wildstar Challenge. I'm asking anybody and everybody to just get involved with the campaign. If you can't, um, give money to donate. If you can't, um, you know, sign up as a volunteer to petition. You have Facebook. You have Twitter. You have friends. You have family. You have a printer, you know? You can create your own signs. You can create a meme or something like that or circulate posts that will just help get the name out there. Because this popularity contest, believe it or not, there's more voters that once they get in the booth, the voting booth, vote haphazardly. They'll just see, ooh, wild star, that guy looks cool. And then they'll, that's it. And guess what? That's one more voter that we just got. So we definitely want to just make sure that we get the name out there. And I would love for all of you to just join me in my efforts to bring back liberty to the state of California. That is what I'm offering, and that is what I know will be what will make us win in the June primary in 2018. So please, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Remember again, get everyone to vote Libertarian, Wild Star for Governor 2018, and um, thank you very much. I show up at the convention. Yeah. And Show up at the convention and support you. Yes, right. and definitely, please. Um, I'm looking for your support as delegates. So if you hopefully are a registered libertarian, uh, please definitely come to the convention in April, which will be April 27th through the 29th. We are in need of delegates, my campaign, to support it, to make sure that we win the party's nomination in April. This would definitely help us excel through the last three months of the quarter from April, May, and June to get to that June 5th primary. So once we win the party's endorsement in April, expect things to skyrocket even further. So, so definitely please be sure to be at that convention in April. <laughs> and um, pardon me, if anyone has any questions, I will take a few. Is that okay? Oh, sure. <laughs> All right. Yes, Derek. Sir, uh, what do you think about the fact that 71% millennials Third party candidate. Mm -hmm. That's the future right there. I'll tell you one thing. While I was out there at the UC Summit earlier today, I didn't get to get in because they had a line out of this world. And once they closed off the auditorium, everyone had to sit outside in a delegated area to watch everything outside on the TV screen. So while I was in line, I'm politicking, you know, <laughs> electioneering, all that good stuff and just introducing myself to hopefully potential voters. And as I was doing so, there was a group of maybe six uh, younger people, I'll just say, millennials. I don't really like that term, but <laughs> every, every word has been politicized, it seems like. Millennials, liberals, conservatives, we're all all of the above. So um, these younger people are behind me, and I give them my card, and they 
course, never heard of me, but they started talking about how they wanted to start chanting my name to, in support at the, at the delegation. Nice. I also moved forward, and I'm speaking to the people in front of me, give them my card, and the lady in front of them hears me mention that I'm a libertarian. And she's like, hey, I'm a libertarian too. She gives me pound, you know, good stuff. And then I said, I'm Nicholas Wildstar, libertarian candidate for governor. Oh, I already follow you on Facebook. Perfect. You see? So I don't even know. I didn't know who she was. <laughs> but the word is already getting out there. It's reaching those far reaches that we want. And with the younger people, they would definitely help excel that message further by way of social media. Elections can be won on Facebook. Apparently, with our last election, presidential election, you know, supposedly had a deciding factor in that. And that is because it is influential when it comes to a media source. People go there just looking, looking, looking for an answer. And when it comes to those um, younger people that um, Derek mentioned that want to get that third party vote, they know that we're the future. They know that we're the Even the young lady mentioned, she said, I'm a libertarian because I know that we're the future. We know this. So we definitely just need to pass that message on and let them know that the two-party system is is broken. Yes, you must be a paid to to the pod. So you're welcome to do that. And How much is it, Mimi? $50? Well, they're, they're $25 a year is where it starts. $25. If you but, want to start there, of course, we'd like more. Party to use it, but twenty-five will make you a delegate, make you a delegate, and make you eligible to be able to participate in that nomination selection at the April convention. So it, please definitely register. In addition, I believe you have to have uh, be a member for nine. Is it ninety days? Is the deadline okay? Well, so. do it now. <laughs> do it now. For all you people out there watching. Um, also, oh, funny. Any more questions? No. All right. Let's go. Um, free market options. And the solution I would provide is to basically end those public private relationships between the government and those companies that should just be free, free of regulation to uh, provide services to the public. I really believe, like, with regards to the single health care, single health care payer system that they're now promoting. It's another way to bankrupt us. It's more taxpayer uh, taxes in our pocket, again, to fund the system and uh, as well as create a new government agency. We want to minimize government. And once you actually apply the scope of how a minimized government will create more options. I was talking to my wife about this earlier. And um, I am married, by the way. This is my lovely wife. <laughs> 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 But I was <laughs> discussing exactly this, and um, by the free market solution to healthcare, um, let's say, for instance, you have a, kid, uh, a doctor straight out of med school who wants to open up his own practice. Now he's able to do so, and without the government regulations, let's say if he wants to create a payment plan system, like a monthly you know, prepayment system, to get people that can't really afford to pay up front all of that medical service. This doctor now has an opportunity to generate income, increase their business, and of course to pursue their career. Opposed to where now they have more government bureaucracy. People receiving Medi-Cal are usually off. Um, treated disrespectfully by providers, whether it be a you know, doctor or a dentist. You know, they see that you have Medi-Cal and they put you at the bottom of the list or want to get you in the office and get you out of there before their PPO patients come in. The higher came, you know, customers. <laughs> it's a business. 
We need to just let businesses right. operate as business without government involvement in them at all, except for when they do something wrong. That's the only place where government needs to come into play. We have to be clean. Us and them, they were speaking, our government actually is. But we know that's not true. So, only capitalism kills the game. And that definitely will come to an end with real government. But that's possible. Well, yeah, that'll be promoted to do it locally. Again, if we want to minimize government's involvement, let's get out of it. And I don't want to deal with it at all. And, and to tell you the truth, I don't want to do any of that. What we think government is good at, we know they fail every time. They've proven that successfully over their 100 plus years in control, whether it be a Republican or Democrat. When government is controlled, they um, they devalue our health care system. They devalue our educational system. They devalue our, our everyday fabric uh, of life. Our, um, our uh, cost of living is devalued. So if we want to increase our value, our buying power, then we just need to get government out of it altogether. If you have a doctor, for instance, they can provide their own health care insurance. Deregulating the market to allow those type of services be provided by those industry um, professionals. Any more questions? No? All right. Woo! Woo! Like I said, you guys, I do have my petition here. If you haven't signed it and signed it yet, please do. I will circulate it. I also have my um, my mailing list here, if you'd like to sign up, so I can please sign up for that. If you want to help me with petitioning, I can email you the document, so please definitely sign up for that. Um, <laughs> and I also have a few things up here. I have my cards, my lovely cards here. So you're welcome to take as many as you like to pass out to friends and family. I also have a few things. <laughs> I have my new lawn signs and bumper stickers. So right now what I'm offering is $5 a month, $5 monthly donation. Take the Wild Star Challenge, gets you a bumper sticker. $10 monthly donation gets you a lawn sign, okay? The two combined, if and I'll autograph them both if you pay if you take my Wild Star Challenge at $18 a month. All right? I'll autograph the bumper sticker and the lawn sign. And that'll hopefully be priceless one day. <laughs> and I also have a few books here. Freedom by Adam Kokesh. If you haven't read the book already, it does an excellent job defining freedom. I'd like to do something really quickly, if I may. Just a quick auction off to see if there's anyone here willing to make a donation here tonight. So um, I will start the bidding at $10. I will autograph the book for you. 15 15 for one book. I have three here, so feel free. Feel at liberty to, you know. <laughs> Not all at once. All right. We got one for 15. All right. Thank you, Boomer. Anybody want another one? I got book two. What's that? 10. 10? All right. We going for 10. 20. 20. 20. Woo! Next up. Anybody want to be 20? Going once, going twice. All right. We got one for Jeff. <laughs> And one more, last one. You want to give me that tip? I'll give you that tip. All right, we got tip. <laughs> 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 Woo! Everybody got a liberty shine on each and every one of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank the speakers, and I want to turn it on to Boomer. Thank you guys for watching.